Good morning guys. Welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm off out and about. It's um, stupid o'clock in the morning as you can see it's pitch black around me. Uh, let me give you an idea. There we go. Come on. Is this going to work? There's the time. It is 19 minutes past four and I'm already out of the house. Um, basically, <laughs> splot market awaits. Now, as I've told you all in the past, splot's already open. Um, dealers start going there three, four o'clock in the morning. I like to get there around five, up past five, uh, to be in with a good chance of uh, getting some decent pieces. Um, so don't ever think it's going to be an easy life, guys. If you want to do this, it's wonderful, but it's not easy. Uh, 20 past 4 I'm already on my way to Cardiff um, and then my mother's going to open up shop this morning um, for me so I can go to Bessemer so it's Splot and Bessemer today we're going to go see what we can find the only downside is it's bloody raining again next week is Malvin I'm going up to Malvin next week guys I can't wait um, but for now it's uh spot market and see what we can find i really am open to pick something nice up today i'm not going to spend loads i've got about five six hundred pound on me just in case because you never know you've got a carrier uh, but my intention is to buy some shelf fillers for the shop cheap and have a look for some chinese porcelain that's my intention today so well what can i say <laughs> so let me just give you a little look before I uh, shoot off now just how dark it is out there it is pitch black this is how early you have to get up to get the bargains you've heard the saying the early bird gets the worm well what can I say guys and there are people that say do you know if it's for you you'll have it but if you don't put yourself in the position you ain't gonna get it because I guarantee you there's a thousand dealers like me there who'll have it before you. Anyway, um, throughout the day now I'll get little snippets, uh, try and film a little bit in the boot sales, try and film what I buy and show you um, in the car today, and then uh, I can check it out for sale then in the shop. Um, I've got a few requests in the shop. I'm after some pub memorabilia today. It hasn't got to be old, just got to be collectible pub memorabilia. I'm after doll's house furniture. Um, there's a few few bits. I've got a little notebook in there of certain things I'm looking for. White fryers. Excuse me. Uh, some rumaki and so forth. So I'm actually going today with a shopping list in mind. And we'll see what we can find. With a bit of luck, I'll uh, I'll get a few pieces. So, <laughs> wish me luck, guys, and I'll uh, I'll give you a little shout now uh, when we get close at the spot. See you soon. Okay, guys, it's not even five o'clock yet. It's um, literally four fifty-nine, um, and we're here. There's about four or five people in there already that I can see. Oh, hang on, where have I gone? There they are. <laughs> There's four or five people in there that I can see already. I'm really hoping um, the main dealer I've come for is here today is uh, Julian. He comes from over the bridge. For those of you who don't know what I mean by that, um, I live in Wales. Julian comes from England and there's a big, massive seven crossing uh the big river seven is a big bridge a couple of mile long um and he comes down for that so fingers crossed he's here it's quiet it's open but it's quiet as you can see now obviously julian will be behind that blue box but there you're not going to see him but there's a few cars in there now and they're all heading towards julian so i want to get out i'm itching to get out there and have a look what he got so, guys, I'll see you soon, and I'll give you little snippets as and when I buy this stuff throughout the day. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. <laughs> okay, guys, it's absolutely bloody freezing down here. Yeah? And I mean freezing. 
Uh, bear with me a second, see what the time is. It's still only half past six. However, I have done very, very well so far, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Jeremy and Simon. Hi guys, just saw you down in sport, said hello. It's nice to see you, haven't seen you for a while. Um, so I'm going to get to show you some of the bits I've bought so far, guys. And to be honest, I'm going to start off with an absolute stormer of a lot. Now, I've just paid £35 for a watercolour. But it really is absolutely spectacular. I don't know. Let me see. Can, I, can you see that there? Hopefully you can see that. Now, it was framed in Swansea in 1982, according to this, the details on the back. I'll give you a proper close-up look at it later. That's a full watercolour and the quality of it is absolutely amazing. You look at the sheep, you look at the sheep and uh, the, the landscape, that's a storming quality watercolour. It is signed, it looks like it's signed Sheridan, uh, down the right, far right corner. So I'm going to have to really have a good look at that later. Now I paid £35 for it, it looks quality enough to be a good listed artist. Now, it could be a few hundred pound, if I can find out who the artist is and it's listed, it could be anyway three, four, five hundred pound. If I can't find the artist, it's still going to be 75, 80, 85 pound in the shop as a seriously top quality watercolour. Now, I do rate that, that is really nice. So, already, it was worth coming just for that watercolour. <laughs> and it was me coming this morning saying, I'm not going to spend much money. Next I have a hors d'oeuvre dish. I think it's hors d'oeuvre dish, is how they pronounce it. Um, and there we go. Now this is, but, let me see, Butchan pot, Pottery uh, from Scotland. It's all hand painted. It's almost like a studio pottery with all these um, birds. Is that supposed to be a starfish? And that looks a bit like a starfish in the centre as well. So it's a real nice bit of studio pottery there. There we go. And the fact is Scottish, I liked. Now, I just paid £3 for that. To be totally honest with you, I think that's going to be about £40 or £50. I'm going to have to do a bit of research on it. But that is really, really nice. A nice top design on that. <coughs> I've also had, guys, um, a seriously nice quality hand-painted teapot. All this is beautifully hand painted, the enamels and everything. Now we're talking this is French porcelain of the late 19th century. Now the handle's been restored, top and bottom has been pinned, but somebody seriously loved this to pin it. It is signed on the base, and if you take the lid off, it has depots and a registration number which dates it to somewhere around 1870, 1880. Absolutely stunning quality. In perfect condition would have been seriously uh, expensive, but that is really nice. And to be honest with you, I display that in my house, even with the handle restored and somebody loved it enough to restore that handle professionally. You know, it's been properly stapled. So, what a beautiful thing for no money whatsoever. A nice little example. Moving on, guys. So, so far, I've had that Scottish studio pottery, that French porcelain, the watercolour. Let's move on to a bit of mid-century modern. Look at that. Look at the colours on that. Absolutely stunning. Love this sort of pierced three holes there three holes here with the pink just showing through um as i said it's probably 1950s who made it i don't know it's probably a staffordshire potteries really nice shape to it love the colors and love the shape i paid three pound for that really nice little uh, piece honestly honestly guys i can't describe how nice that looks there we go you can just make out, when you hold it flat, you can make out this raised rim on the one side compared to the other side. Um, 
Would have been nice to have had a maker's mark and make life easy for me. But for three quid, we're not going to grumble. Last and final piece again was three pounds. It's not my last piece, sorry. I'm telling, I'm telling lies again. This piece is three pound again. And again, sort of mid-century. I love this almost burnt orange effect that's on the vase. And it's all rippled, crinkled. The only way you can do it, no one used to fold up a piece of paper to make like a fan. That is the effect this has got all the way around. Lovely condition. Now, it's only gone in press number of 2201. So I'm thinking maybe Silvac or something along M lines. But again, for three quid, what a lovely statement piece. Lovely looking vase, really strange looking vase to be honest. I haven't seen one of them before. So if I find out it's Silvac or one of those, well, it ain't going to really affect the price as a mid century vase anyway. Um, could even be 30s. That one is probably going to be 20, 25 pound. The blue and pink is going to be probably 20 pound. The hors d'oeuvres dish is going to be up probably 40. The watercolour I'm hoping is going to be in a few hundred. And that teapot, even though the handle's been damaged, it's probably going to be still 20 quid. Give me a look. I have got something else in here. This little beauty just cost me £3.50. It's a pincushion, guys. Porcelain uh, lady on the top, and her dress comes down over a, like a bit of sponge. Um, and she is a pincushion. She's a beautiful little lady. Uh, it's an old fashioned antique, but they do sell, and I still sell these. Um, you get a variety of different styles. You can have them with a porcelain body and just the material hanging down and things. Uh, this one here. Some type of crinoline lady, I suppose, but uh, yeah, just stab the pins in, job done. She cost me £3.50 and she's going to go out for about £15 in the shop. She's small, she's pretty, she's different. It's some, I haven't got one of these in the shop at the moment, so that'll go to a sewing collector or someone who just likes it. Have I got anything else? I think that's it for a minute, guys. I'm going to get back out there now and see what else I can find. But I'm in love with the watercolour. And I'm in love with the teapot. Absolutely adore the teapot. So, well, to be honest, I like everything I've bought this morning. So, so far, it's gone really well. So, wish me luck. I'm going back in. It's filling up in there. It is freezing. It's in the minuses. But I'm looking forward to getting back out there. So, I'll see you soon, guys. Bye for now. Okay guys, so that's me um, on my way home. I was going to go to Besma as well this morning, but to be totally honest with you, I bought that much this morning in Splot. Um, I don't need to go to Besma. I'm more than happy. I have spent a bit of money, but at the same time, you have to spend it to make it. Never be afraid to go with your gut and gamble a bit. I've had some really nice pieces, including a nice piece of Danish pottery. Um, it doesn't all come in for nothing and um, I've walked away from one or two pieces as well over the bit of principal um, I was uh, dealing with one of my regular dealers who sells to me all the time and um, I give him a bid of £25 on a £30 lot and he comes back at 28 I go 27 and he refuses the £27 so I know it's only the pound but it was more the principle of every single time I ask for something off him he chips me if he got a fiver on it and I want it for four he'll say 450 so I thought do you know what you can keep it this week and find out how hard it is to sell it to the public yourself especially at the cardboard sale so yeah I bought that much stuff I've had some beautiful paintings <laughs> guess what else I had guys Beauty and the Beast, Meerkat. I would offer it to Mam, but she's already got it. So this one will go into the shop. Um, so all in all, it's been a really good day. I've got some really good buys. Um, I can't wait to get home now, back to the shop, look at all the stock. I'll film uh, the rest of the stock now at the shop, so you can see that. Um, but it's not all going out in the shop. I've decided the watercolour of the landscape and the sheep I'm keeping. 
only for now. It'll hang on my wall until I'm ready to sell it. I've got a screen printing uh, on canvas picture in the back uh, from an Isle of Wight artist, limited edition, only 95 ever made. Really, really nice. That's the wrong stock, wrong type of stock for the valleys where I live. Uh, so that's going to come home and I'm going to uh, sell that at a later stage, um, maybe online. Nice piece of art, but maybe it's uh, an online sale. Uh, the Danish pottery, uh, when I show you that, it's too expensive for the shop, to be honest with you. It's going to be 100, between 1 and 200 pound for that, so that's not going to go to the shop. Right, I've got lots of little shop fillers, um, little curios, bits of glass, things like that, shelf fillers, so it's all good. And I've had jewellery, and I've had gold and silver and coins. So all in all, I'm really pleased with the morning. And I'll show you it all now when we get back to the shop. So for now, it's been a good day. It's, uh, it is raining. I don't know if you can see. Uh, let me turn the camera around a second. You can see on the windscreen there. It is raining. So I've decided I'm not going to stick around for best. My phone, ma'am, I'm going to open up the shop. Although I'm not exactly dressed for opening up the shop today now. They'll just have to put up with the fact I'm a scruffy sod today. <laughs> it's not often I'm scruffy. I'll just keep my coat on. I'll put my other coat on and keep my coat on today. Because all I got on is a t-shirt and tracksuit. I wanted to be comfortable down the boot sill. So for now guys, I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye and I'll uh, see you at the shop with the rest of the stock. And uh, hope you look forward to seeing that. Okay guys, so I'm back at the shop. Um, I've changed my coat, this is the best I can offer them for today. If I'm a bit scruffy, I'm a bit scruffy, it's just tough. Um, you've already seen the French porcelain uh, teapot, the hors d'oeuvres dish. The, I'll redo the um, sheet painting. Uh, looking at this now in daylight, uh, to be totally honest with you, it's quite spectacular. I'm not sure if that's going to be by Sevs or one of those. Um, really is amazing quality, guys. Really pleased with that one. So, happy with that. Um, so let's get showing you some of the bits I've had now. In whilst uh, you haven't seen it anyway. So, there we have Beauty and the Beast Meerkat. As you know, I get between 10 and 20 pounds for these all day long. Not a problem at all. I paid six pounds for that one. Pair of quite charming, nothing spectacular. Uh, bookends, not a lot of age to them. That's probably a bit of plywood painted, to be totally honest with you. But uh, still, a nice pair of bookends, and they they cost me um, three pounds this morning. They're going to go out for about 18, 20 pound the pair, quite happily. Bear with me a second guys, there's uh, people looking at me, uh, see whether or not they come in before I carry on. If they do, I'll stop the video. Nope. I like this piece. It's not as saleable now as it once was, but it's beautiful. It's carved serpentine stone. Normally this stuff's from Land's End. Um, and it says a match striker. I don't know how the light is there for you to see, but the vein in running through this stone is absolutely spectacular. It's, um, you got the rings cut around the top for striking your match on. A uh, little match striker like that, you know, it was a time that would have been up 30 or 40 pound. Now I'm gonna get about 15 for it. Um, but that came in this morning for a pound. We're a really nice little piece. Feels lovely in your hand too. Uh, next we have a little bit of Maltese glass. Malta, Medina, Malta. Signed on the base as well. It looks like it's signed Medina 78B or 783. I don't know if it's picking it up on our guys. Uh, that one was three pounds. 
I have a nice little piece here in a Bristol blue colour but produced in Sweden by Orophos. There we go again on the base, look, Orophos. So, nice little glass again by Orophos. It was three quid. These ain't going to be fortunes, they're going to be between 10 and 15 pound each. You know, I'll put 15 each on them. If somebody says 10, they'll take it. If they offer me 12, they take it. But it's profit three in three pound into twelve or three into ten is good profits. This I like. This is a really nice Victorian tumbler or pint glass maybe. Large polished pontle, loads of wear, beautiful striations in the glass, I don't know if you can see them. As glasses go, that's a really nice early tumbler, beaker, whatever you want to call it. That was a quid. For a pound for a glass, a penny, well less than a penny a year. I had a pair of Japanese Satsuma vases guys, of two totally different quality. We have one here that is quite a modernish one, miniature vases they are. Um, and then I have one year which is 19th century, 120th, 119th. And the difference in the quality is so evident, it's unbelievable. This is the earlier one. Really nice uh, porcelain. They were a pound each, guys. Uh, miniature Japanese vases like that, pound each. If I get 12 quid again, they look nice in the cabinet, they're different. And if I get 12 quid, I'm happy enough. You know, pound into 12, nothing wrong with that. Got a nice little collectible snuff box, brass, usually used for miners. Little Welsh snuff box there with a Welsh dragon on the front. That was a pound. No. Two pound. That one was two pound. Again, it's going to be 12 to 15 pound. I had a selection of door knockers, guys. Now, it cost me a fiver for the three. We got a nice little parrot. So you got the parrot there. They're not huge door knockers. They're almost more decorative or for a small. We got a kangaroo with a joey in his pouch. And we got an art deco cat on a wall. They price wise are going to be around eight pound each in the shop. I'll put them on a shelf, about eight pound each. Um, so my fiver is going to return about £24. Sorry guys, I had someone come in, they knocked the door, they could see me filming, they were a bit shy of coming in. Um, I've still got my star lot to show you in a bit, but uh, in the meantime... I so wish this was in better condition. It's in good condition. Um, under and over game it is. It's tin with a plastic top, but the plastic's all discoloured and you know um, almost fogged. It's an under and over game, vintage. You just pull it back a bit like pinball, and it goes down, around, and up, and you have to score through the holes. Um, Age-wise, I'd say it's probably 60s or 70s. But it would just be really nice if I could clean that plastic up um, and get the plastic cleaned up. But it was a quid. Um, I may just put it out, give it a wash, put it out as is. It may be a lot cleaner with a wash. Um, and just sell it for a tenner. It's different, it's quirky, you know, tin games. People do like them and it does look the part. So. I couldn't leave it there, uh, even though it was discoloured and you couldn't see the game very well, I just couldn't bring myself to leave it there. Got a nice statement piece next. It's almost a double gourd vase uh, with this shape, it's not quite, or a wasted vase, whatever you want to call it, and it's produced by Denby. Uh, it's Denby Energy Large Vase. So the vase pattern is obviously energy. Um, 
once it's washed, it's stinking a minute. Once it's washed, it's going to be an absolute storm of a vase. Beautiful. It's going to look really nice on display somewhere. Um, if you've got a nice dark cabinet or a nice dark shelf, you could sit down. It's going to look a million pound. Now, I paid three pound for that one this morning. And the next one I paid four pound for off the same dealer. Now that. Finest crystal you can get. Diamond cut in here, little slice cut in around here. Uh, what can I say? It's signed, fully signed. Harbridge, England, is it? Looks like. Eyeglass. We need an eyeglass. Struggling to see. I'm getting old, guys. I need an eyeglass just to read signatures. Yeah, Harbridge, England. So I'll have to do a little look in. But Harbridge could be the, uh, well, it's going to be the uh, manufacturer, no doubt, or retailer. But either way, it is absolutely stunning. Once I give that a wash, it was uh, £4. That's going to be £35, £40 in the shop. Easily. Over the moon with that. Um, one of my star lots, guys. Here we go. Now I've paid £40 for this and I tell you what, do I rate it or what? Beautiful. I know it's only finished in brown glaze, studio pottery. Let me take the lid off. Don't drop the lid. It's a full script signature there and there and Denmark here. I'm hoping to find out who's made it. I love the shape. Do you know, I have sold this type of thing in the past and I've had, you know, £80, £100, no problem whatsoever. But looking at this, I'd see that one as between £100 and £200 comfortably, depending on obviously who who designed it. Um, i got to check the name out when I get five minutes, but it's, oh, it's a beautiful shape, guys. Really pleased with that. It may just be a teapot to 99% of you, but to the 1% of you who knows the studio pottery and appreciates the Danish designs it's a couple of hundred pound gotta be um, I could be wrong you know but I'm not gonna get less than a hundred for it over the moon with that guys seriously I got the jewelry to show you now and I've got a real look at the art uh, for you to have a look at the art so bear with me okay so I'm gonna give you another little glimpse of this now because you saw it earlier on in the dark almost absolutely stunning it is signed down there looks like sheridan the quality i tell you what when you look at it at the distance it could almost be a photograph it's that good but it's a watercolor and as you know i paid him 30 pound for this this morning was it 35 either 30 or 35 i'll have to check my book um 35 i think it was thinking about it and i paid him 30 pound for this one Look at that. Now this is a silk screen print. So it's, it feels like an oil painting on canvas, but it's printed. Uh, beautiful design. Look at that. Just chair sitting there in front of the shelf with the vase and flowers. And doesn't that look so realistic in the camera? Wow. And you know what? It's limited edition. Number 53 of only 95 ever made. Fully signed. And this... Sorry guys, as I was saying, this is the way you want to buy your artwork. Look at that. Certificate of Authenticity, number 53 of 95. Fully signed artist signature, and it is limited edition by Sabrina Rossino. And she is, I believe, it was Isle of Wight artist, yep. Isle of Wight, born in 1980 in the Isle of Wight. So she's the artist behind this. I haven't done no research yet, but I would imagine in an art gallery that'd be three or four hundred pound. No problem at all. I don't think I'm going to struggle to get 120, 140 for it. Um, I could be wrong, but with only 95 in the world, um, you know, if I was in a gallery, that'd really look the part. Between that and that, I love it. 
Then of course you got that beautiful teapot there. Love that. This was nice obviously guys this morning. I don't know whether, how good the pictures were this morning in the dark. But this Scottish pottery hors d'oeuvre dish. Really nice piece. This sort of starfish in the centre here. It really is something quite nice. Um, give you a better look at the mark. There we go. There's the maker's mark. What can I say? It's been a seriously good morning, and I'm not finished yet. I'm going to show you the jewellery next. Okay, guys. So that's um, most of the antiques now. As you've seen, I love the few pieces. The two pictures, the Danish teapot and the Scottish studio pottery bowl. I think I'm going to put all of them in the house. Um, they're all to go online. They are. They're not coming in the shop. Now I'm going to start off by here with. An 1897 shilling, look at the condition of that. This will be solid silver. And it is in lovely condition with a nice patina and a nice colour. That was 50 pence. Oh, it says on the tin what it is, look at that. Precious metals. What we have there is a solid silver with a cubic zirconia or coloured glass bracelet and that was two pounds solid silver two pounds actually I think it was a pound uh, this bag here I picked up the bag and I went to ask her how much the earrings are and I saw that one there's gold that one is gold that's there's gold I thought I'm not even gonna open it I said, how much do you want for the bag of earrings? She said, two quid. So I just picked the bag up, put it in my pocket. I haven't even pulled the stuff out of there. So we're going to see it now together. For all I know, most of it's junk, but I know there is some gold in there. So let's see what we got in there. Get out. There we go. It's all out. Right, then. So instantly, that looks gold. That looks gold. They are definitely gold. They are definitely gold. There's another gold one there. I'll have to check these ones because they may or may not be gold, but I know they are definitely gold. That's gold. They're silver. They look silver. That's silver. That's silver. That's silver. They look silver. There's the other gold one. So there we have it. That's another silver one. That's what I got for two quid, guys. I got to check these ones to make sure they're gold, but they are silver. They're gold. Uh, if you give me two seconds to check them, I'll let you know where we're at. And this lot then looks costume jewellery. They'll go back out for a couple of quid. They become free and clear. Um, you know, you can see should be able to see some sort of mark on there. Is it that side? Yeah, it's there. And zoom in just for if you focus. Yeah, it was that side. So you can see the mark just about probably on there, guys. So they're gold. Uh, lots of silver. I'm going to check these now and I'll let you know how we'll get on with them. This one here, let me zoom back out. This one here, I actually paid a pound for this because I had so much good stuff off. I, I actually gave her the pound she asked for for this. And it's a designer one by Ted Baker. And it's a really pretty bangle. And despite the fact it's uh, like a plastic, um, I thought Shannon would absolutely adore that. So that's going to Shannon. It's really pretty bracelet. Okay guys, uh, that's them all checked. These are silver and they're gold. They weren't, they were costume jewellery. So that lot is rubbish. I'll put it back out and I'll chuck that back out. And I'll get two or three quid back for that. These, they're going in my safe. They're going in my safe. They're gold. All the silver earrings will go down there with the rest of the collection. As you can see there, all silver earrings, full shelf of them. 
and I get between five and ten pound a pair on silver earrings. Just quickly, guys, um, I found the basically the teapot already. It only took me five minutes, and it's Nils Kahala. And this is it here, uh, Nils Kahala, Hack Art Pottery of Denmark. And some of the prices they're asking, they're not achieving these prices, but um, they're not also not letting the stuff go. Uh, there's only a very small amount sold. This one here, he was asking 194 and took an offer on it of 170. And there's a few souls in the 20 and 30 small vases and that. But they're not letting the pieces go. If they can't get the price, they're not selling them. Um, so I'm quite confident now that that is going to be up 150 to 200 pound. Okay guys, I've um, found out the uh, designer of the teapot already. And here's the asking price for it. And this is on Ite. So it didn't take me long to find, um, and for my £40 outlay, 121 return, 120 return, doesn't matter if it's 100, it's, um, it's a good one. Happy days, now I'm going to work on the uh, watercolours. Okay guys, yet another cut in. I don't normally do this with cut ins, I normally just make my video and publish it, but while I'm sat in the shop today I've been doing some research. Um, this is the topic of this one and do you know it don't matter how many times I stared at that signature I went cockeyed looking honestly my eyes went crossed um, so I put out and asked for some help I posted the images of the signature on my group and on the group and uh, talking antiques on Facebook and of course talking antiques has got some like 60,000 members um, so it's a brilliant group and 10 minutes later, I had my answer. Um, well, shocking answer too. The artist is George Shalders. Um, hang on two seconds guys, I did have the details up here. 1826 to 1873 he was uh, painting. Uh, done lots of sheep. They even do posters of his work now. This is an original watercolour. Um, this isn't a print, this is a watercolour. Um, believe it or not, one of his paintings now on eBay, which is an oil on canvas, uh, is 8,000 or 7,000. There's one lower down, um, which is basically like a farmyard scene. And that's 1800. He's a fully listed artist and his work is pulling anywhere from 2000 upwards. So that was my find of the year. I'm going to give you some close ups now. Since this is so good, I'm going to give you some close ups and a real, real good look at the uh, painting in detail. Okay guys, so before I go into any more details showing you about the uh, artist and everything, right, I'm going to show you the actual painting. I'm going to come in close now so you can actually see the quality of everything. Apparently this gentleman exhibits in the, or exhibited in the Royal Academy of Arts, artists. He died at the age of 47 through overwork because of how much work he put into his paintings. Not being funny. Look at the quality of this sky. You've got the birds in, all this swirling and everything in the sky, simulating the sun rays coming down. It's absolutely spectacular. I've had a really good response. Loads of people helping me. Oh, there's a date there. 1871 by the looks of that. There we go, 1871 I think. So you got his name and it's 1871. It's hard to read, I'll have to have a good look at it later. Um, 
but honestly look at the quality of that and I'm going to show you in a minute what my research has just shown there are dedicated sales just to this artist Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, it looks like 1871. Okay guys, before I go on to showing you any more research, um, the site helped. The site helped you, um, Talking Antiques, and here's a copy of my post. So I put it there, bought a beautiful painting, and I couldn't recognize the artist. So I put up the pictures and the close-ups and I had a couple of suggestions and straight away Gina Dow by there pointed her out, said it's worth up to 2000 depending on size and year um, and so on, Helen Chug and everybody else commenting. Um, so then I've uploaded more images, lots more images. The date was 1871. And now I'm going to show you my research. Oh, I was commenting. Somebody's commented. Hang on. Well, while you're here, you just want to see the live. Hi. Hi. Sorry about that, guys. A lady came in at a do a sale. Can't turn sales away. Uh, Helen's Chug's uh, comment was asking, is this Suffolk? I don't know. Um, I really don't. But um, there we have it. The site has helped. So what I done then, I went on to Google and I had a look um, researching the artist. And what do I do? I end up at Sotheby's. Now Sotheby's have sold quite a lot of these. Let me show you an example by a estimate of 10 to 15,000. There we have, let me move this arrow. A similar sort of uh, theme there and a similar size. Mine is 28 inches. This one is 31 inches, so you're only talking 3 inches more. And the realised price, sold price, for those of you who would say you shouldn't be looking at asking prices. Where is it? Let me go back. There it is. 10 to 15,000 sold for 12,000 plus 20% buyer's premium. That's just that one. There are plenty of others. Um, you know, 12 to 1,600. Depending on the year they were done, the size of the painting, the quality of the painting, they get a thousand pounds for a six inch one. So it's definitely looking, there you go, there's another one, three to five thousand, eight to twelve thousand. It's quite shocking. This is all Sotheby's, sold prices, two grand, two to three thousand there, five to eight thousand. So as you can see, we're talking a serious artist with serious prices and a seriously rare painting. And you were there to see it from start to finish. From my £30 buy where I was at the boot sale thinking, oh, it's a quality painting, to now seeing it all. And watch Sandy's face. She's got a bad mouth. She got a bad mouth, guys. She had a tooth out because she had an abscess and she got a bit of an infection in her gum, so she's suffering. Everybody give her a big love heart. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, guys, it's really so I've had stitches as well. And now this is on fire, yeah. I'm back up on Monday and I'll be on antibiotics. And that's why she weren't here with me today in the I video. I couldn't have gone. It was no way I could have gone. You haven't stopped the talking, Ola. <gasps> <laughs> Do Don't smile alert. <laughs> I've been quiet all day. Yeah, I know. Anyway, back to this, guys. Um, I haven't decided yet whether that's going to go on my wall or whether it's ended up to London. The likelihood is, it's going on my wall. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I don't know what else more to say, guys. Um, absolutely astonishing find. Um, thank you to everybody who helped me identify it. And there was um, a couple who mentioned it on my group as well. Um, and I, do you know what? I am going to say thank you to them as well. Two seconds. Yeah, what do you Sorry, uh, Where's my page? Where is it? I want to say thank you as well because he helped as well on my site. Fred? Fred Zweig? 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 Is it? Hang on. Why are you waiting? Bear with me a second, guys. I want to say thank you. 
to everybody who helped me with finding this one out so bear with me no sorry Jonathan Johnson so let me just give you a little look there uh, every, anybody who helps me I'm grateful for the help there we are Jonathan thank you very much for your help hopefully I can't see the screen hopefully it's there so all in all guys uh, it's been a very successful day leaving the painting aside everything else I bought has turned up trumps it's been an absolute astonishing day and hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the research of the painting and the build up and the excitement coming in and kicking in um, as this really important painting has been found so thanks for watching guys <laughs> what can I say guys all in all an um, absolute superb day really really over the moon some beautiful pieces bought in um, yeah I'm just super super happy with the day's buy-in um, not lots of little smalls, but I've had some really nice pieces, some impressive pieces. And to be totally honest with you, I tend to be going more down this detective art line at the moment for the shop because it's easier to sell. Um, I'll still buy the proper antiques and I'll still buy the stuff that pulls the big money. No, I'm not being funny. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. What can I say? Even this, believe it or not, I know you saw this in the car, I don't know if you could see how beautiful that was in the car, but even that bit of uh, modern studio pottery or mid-century pottery, I love the contrast of colours, I love the fact this up at that side, down this side, that's a real nice decorative bowl. I wish I knew what bloody made it. There is something impressed under the glaze. Uh, but there's no way I'm ever going to read that. It glazed over and it's just filled it up. So, yeah. What can I say? All in all, guys, it's been a seriously good buy-in day. Going to make a lot of money from today. Um, I'm putting one, two, three, four. I'm putting four pieces away and the gold away. And I still think I'll double my money. After I've put all them bits away. So, happy days. So I'm going to leave it there guys, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing uh, the variety of stock. The boot sales now haven't even started back up yet tidy and already some absolute storming gear coming out. Um, very, 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 very happy. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I would appreciate a like and a share guys. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you've uh, subscribed and I'll give you a thumbs up. You'll find me on Facebook, I have a page and a group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or come to the shop, visit me at the shop. It's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys, and bye for now.